Anti-reflection layer. Let's set up the problem for anti-reflection. Let's say we have the interface between two materials. So we have material one, we have material two, there's an incoming wave, and due to the impedance mismatch, we get a reflection and of course some transmission. But maybe we don't want the reflection. Maybe we want to zero out reflections. This is super common, for example, on eyeglasses or lenses on cameras. Any light that gets reflected, at the, the best thing that can happen is that we lose light to the photo detector. But an even worse thing that can happen is that that scatters around inside the imaging system, producing all kinds of other bad effects. So there's many times we would like to zero out the reflections. Well, let's look at the equation for reflection. So the reflection coefficient for that interface is really the difference between the two impedances over the sum. And if we stare at that, well, if we could have the two impedances equal, we could zero out reflections, but that's not really an option. We have to have these two different materials. If it's a lens, you have to go from air to glass. We don't really have a choice there. So what can we do? Well, the simplest thing is, if we want to go from material one to material two, is put a layer between them of some other material. And we'll call this the anti-reflection layer that'll have some refractive index, some impedance, and also some thickness with it. So now the problem is, how do we choose these numbers so that we can get exactly zero reflection from that interface? To answer this question, let's go back to this original equation for the overall reflection from a dielectric slab. At this point, we have a dielectric slab. This anti-reflection layer is the slab. So how do we get this to go to zero? Well, we could do one of two things. The denominator could go to infinity, but that's not really an option. There's no way of doing that. So it must be the numerator that has to go to zero in order to zero out reflections. So our problem reduces to this. Well, let's think about this now. We really don't have a choice on these two reflection coefficients other than the choice in materials, but chances are we can't get either of these to be zero. So we don't really have a choice there. So the trick must be this psi term in order to get all of this to go to zero. So let's solve this equation for the psi term. So the first step is just solve it for this complex exponential. So the complex exponential is minus R12 over R23. Well, we want to solve for psi, and we have e to the bunch of stuff times psi. So it makes sense then that we would take the natural log of both sides to just isolate what's in that exponent. So we take the natural log of both sides. Now here's where a lot of folks would run into an error. The natural log of this exponential is not minus j2 psi. That's because this complex exponential is a trig function and it actually repeats every integer multiple of two pi. So to correctly invert that, yes, it's minus j2 psi, but to this two psi term, which is the phase, we have to add to that integer multiples of two pi. And so this M can be anything negative or anything positive in general. From there, we can now solve for the psi term and we end up with this equation. But psi itself really isn't useful. We want to solve for the thickness of the layer. Remember the two reflection coefficients now. We have medium one to the anti-reflection layer and then we have medium two to the anti-reflection layer. We can plug those back into our equation for psi. So we just blindly put those in. We'll turn the crank and simplify that a little bit, and we end up with this sort of ratio of terms of different impedances. All right, now, ultimately, we're after the thickness of this slab. So psi, the phase we accumulate going through this slab is k naught times the refractive index we've chosen for this layer and the thickness. So psi we replace with k naught NAR D. Recognizing that k naught is the free space wave number, two pi over lambda, we can replace the k naught with two pi over lambda. Now we're in a good position to solve for D. So we can do that. And we see we have a lambda naught 
over 4 NAR. This is essentially a quarter wavelength inside the layer. Multiplying this term, which in general could end up being a complex number, and then plus or minus integer multiples of lambda over 2. Now, because this could potentially be a complex number, we really just want to go with the real part of whatever it is we calculate over here. And so that's the equation that we'll use. Now, this is by far the most general design equation for anti-reflection layers that you'll see. And if you Google designing anti-reflection layers, you're not going to see this. You're going to see what we'll arrive at next, which is a lot simpler. But I wanted to provide this because, well, you'll have a lot more freedom in designing these. So let's simplify this a bit, but it's not entirely clear how we simplify it. Well, here's this function of all the different impedances we had inside the argument of the natural log. So I've multiplied this out and staring at this long enough, we can figure out how to simplify this or at least a condition. We see we have this NAR times N2 minus or A to 2 minus A to 1. And that term appears in the denominator and numerator. We also have an NAR squared minus A to 1 times A to 2. What if we chose the impedance of the anti-reflection layer squared to be this A to 1 times A to 2? Well, if we chose that, this entire expression just becomes negative 1. In which case, our design equation reduces to this. And this is what you would see if you Google anti-reflection layers. So you'll set the impedance to be essentially the geometric mean of the two impedances that you want to match. And then you make the layer a quarter wavelength, plus or minus integer multiples of a half wavelength from there. So let's really look at this equation that we have. This first term, lambda naught over the refractive index of the anti-reflection region. So we have free space wavelength over refractive index. So this ratio is the wavelength inside the anti-reflection layer. When we divide that by four, we interpret this term as a quarter wavelength. So the nominal thickness of an anti-reflection layer is a quarter wavelength. And this is what everybody knows and understands. Well, if we look at the second term, it's really the same thing as this first term, but with a two. So this is a half wavelength, but then we have plus or minus integer multiples of this half wavelength, and that's how we interpret M. Now, in practicality, we can't really set this to be negative something really large because we'll get negative thicknesses. And so this really just needs to be a positive number. Mathematically, it can be negative, but physically, uh, we can't make the D negative. So we're really only looking at M equals zero and positive numbers from there. So here's the design procedure. We have to match going from A to one to A to two. So we will choose the impedance of this medium to be the geometric mean or the square root of A to one times A to two. And so there's a bit of freedom there because we also have to choose refractive index. Now, almost all the times, the permeability is negligible. And so the relative permeability is usually equal to one. Now, in this case, we can choose the anti-reflection layer in terms of the permittivity or refractive index instead of impedance. And that's because impedance is no longer a function of the permeability, only permittivity. So we don't even have to think in terms of the impedance. And so if we want to do it in terms of dielectric constant, the dielectric constant of the anti-reflection is the geometric mean of the two dielectric constants we're trying to match, or much more commonly is it's done through refractive index. We're trying to match refractive index one, the refractive index two, and we choose the refractive index of the anti-reflection region as the geometric mean. So this is probably what you'll see if you Google anti-reflection layer, that we calculate refractive index as the geometric mean. Given the refractive index, then you can calculate the thickness of the anti-reflection layer. And M equals zero is the most common choice, and you'll see why here in just a minute. So that will be it. You calculate the refractive index of the anti-reflection layer. Given that, you can calculate the thickness. And maybe you're just not able to make a quarter wavelength, but you can do three quarters of a wavelength, in which case uh, setting M to higher numbers is an option. Let's do an example. 
let's say we want to maximize light through a lens. The lens is made of fused silica. It has a refractive of 1.52. And of course, outside of that is air. So let's design an anti-reflection coating that maximizes transmission around 500 nanometers. And that's about the center of the visible spectrum. Well, the first thing we'll do is calculate the refractive index of the anti-reflection region. And so it's the geometric mean between air and fused silica. So we get a refractive index of 1.2329. After that, we can calculate the thickness. And so the thickness is going to be 101.4 nanometers and then plus or minus integer multiples of 202.8 nanometers. And I say plus or minus, but really it should only be plus because we can't have negative thicknesses. So most people would just choose the M equals zero solution and they would say the thickness of this anti-reflection coating should be 101.4 nanometers. So here's a typical response of anti-reflection layers. So let's first look at these dashed lines. This is the transmission and reflection without the anti-reflection layer. And so here we're going from something that has a refractive index of one to something that has a refractive index of three. And so we're getting a 25% reflection all the way across. When we introduce a quarter wave anti-reflection layer, we get a really nice broad band anti-reflection response. If instead I were to choose and add a half wavelength to that, so I have essentially three quarters of a wavelength, it definitely has a minimum at, at the design wavelength, but it's more narrow band. And in fact, the thicker I make this, the more narrow band it will be. It will always zero out here, but it will be narrow band. Now, maybe that's something we want. Maybe we want an anti-reflection, but relatively narrow band. Usually that's not the case. We want a broadband. And so this is yet another reason to make something that's the, the M equals zero solution. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for using EMPossible. I want to create more videos and I want to continue to improve how electromagnetics and computation is taught online. To do that, it will really help me if you can like this video and subscribe to our channel. I also want you to know we have a lot more content that you may not be aware of. See everything we have to offer at eimpossible.net.